Okay, well, thank you. Hope you have a nice lunch and hope I don't put you to sleep because I'm going to have to rush to South America, all right? So I'm going to try to give you a, bird, a bird's eye view of the situation of sawfish in South America. Uh, to fir the first thing is South America is quite a big continent. We have basically two features, Pacific and Atlantic and the Caribbean area over there. Um, first, I was assigned the fowl fishing area 41, which comprises French Guiana, part of it, all the way to Argentina. And that's the one I'll be talking first. So, um, the French Guiana is very hard to find data. I don't blame Rachel for having a hard time finding data from over there. Um, there's some data from Suriname, which is not a French Guiana, but it's close. Um, both species have been reported, the Pristis Pristis and Perotetti. Uh, but we have illegal um, fishery information that's still coming on. Every now and then the uh, Brazilian fleet goes illegally into the Guianas, not only French Guiana but Suriname and the Dutch Guiana too. And they would bring data and uh, fish from their illegally fishery. So we know they're still being taken over in that area of the French Guiana and other neighboring Guianas. And now Brazil, um, we have both species. We have um, also in Guyana, but in Brazil we have adults or adults and juveniles. There are many reports for Brazil, and both of them have been, have been protected by a federal law since 2005. I was the one missing information for <laughs> turning information for Lucy. Sorry about that, Lucy. Um, but recently only Perotati has been taken. We have a huge, it's important to understand we have a huge coastline. So it's a single country, but with completely different aspects along the coast. Um, these maps were from 2008, it was a chapter, this is on the pectinata species, so the points here, they correspond to previous uh, records of occurrence for the species. Um, it's considered critical, uh, critically endangered in many states, we have state red lists, and in some states it has already been considered regionally extinct, and there are no recent records for the species. Now there's Pristis Pristis, or the Perotetti as it used to be. We have the pinkish dots for previous records, so apparently it was distributed further south along the coast. And we have a very intense distribution that still captures along the Amazon River, not as much as in the past 10 years, but, all, but mainly along the coastline here, the mouth of the Amazon and the region of the Amazon discharge. So this region, since it's very important, I would like to talk a bit about it. Oh, slowly. Okay, there you go. So it's the Amazon estuary. Uh, it has unique features, uh, tidal influence, sand banks, and uh, influence of the Brazilian and the Guianas current, the North Brazilian and Guianas current. It's a area considered of very high productivity here. And you can see the discharge, it, go, it stretches out over 200 kilometers into the Atlantic Ocean. So it's a completely different area here. The bad news is that it's a major fishing area because of its productivity, so it's subject to the action of artisanal and industrial fleets, mainly bottom trawling and its catfish. You have this catfish here that's commercially very valuable. You have shrimps, you have, I think you call it a red snapper, and shrimp. So you have the artisanal and industrial fleet work in this area. And perhaps we'll see how it works. The good news is that it was just in the beginning of the year considered an ecologically or biologically significant marine area, or EBSAs as we call it in Brazil. So there was a proposal for the Amazonian Orinoco influence zone. So that's we have the joining of from the Amazon all the way to Orinoco estuary. And it includes Brazil, all the Guianas, and goes all the way to Venezuela. So hopefully the signatory parties will be discussed in the CDB conferences and forum, but hopefully there will be some effect over here. We have rostra, as um, Matt already mentioned, the uses uh, include um, the decoration, the exported, and also medicinal. After the ban, you don't see them anymore in the market. You don't see them anymore um, for sale that way, just hanging, hanging as we used to have. Um, they're not being dried out in the public, but we know there's still some saws being sold. There's still a small quantity of trade despite the CITES and the federal protection. But meat, it's now being landed instead of 5 a.m. along with all the other landing boats. 
it's at 2 a.m. so it's the sampling is just getting harder and harder but they're trying to reduce and make it um, not as bad it there has been some effect on the ban all right now we go all the way south to Uruguay it's only pectinata we have register for there so there are some species even um, there was a field guide included for pectinata caught from this area here which is a big estuary in the borderline between Argentina and Uruguay there have been no recent reports and the National Action Plan for Uruguay um, cites, uh, mentions pectinata as a doubtful species. In Argentina, we have also pectinata. The records go a bit further um, back in time. There are fisheries report. There are three rostra the, the, in the museum, but they're uncatalogued since the origin is uncertain. And uh, it's known that one of these rostra in the museum comes from 1921, which would be a pretty old record, but they cannot, cannot tell which one of the three is the old one. And also for Argentina, it was included in a species list again. And in 1971, we had a German researcher visiting, which spotted uh, a Christie's species, they, he is not sure which one it was, probably Pectinata, close to the surface. But it was the second record in nearly a century. So even that, it's, it's way down. It was placed as a rare species by many and collaborators. And in the National Plan of Action is only cited. It just mentioned the species for the area. So in brief, we have Uruguay and Argentina with pectinata. There are no recent reports in pectinata throughout the range where it used to be. In the north of Brazil, we have lots of um, pristis pristis. And there's probably a connection between the Amazon and the or Orinoco estuary. Uh, there is a decrease in population, which might be one of the largest, if not the largest population in this, of the species in the world. There's still sampling going on. Again, it, there are samples that are, they get entangled in the nets that are brought ashore. So it's not a regular sampling. It's whenever they come in. But we're looking a bit at genetics, and it would be very interesting to look at telemetry for these guys over here. And enforcement is a problem. OK, um, FL, now we're going to the Pacific now. I will really have to rush through the Pacific. But we have from Colombia all the way down to Chile. In Colombia, there were reports mainly from the Madalena area, the Madalena River estuary. They mentioned that there, um, there are no more reports in the past 10 years. There have been register of adults, juveniles, some adults. And there was one large sized um, over 2 meter um, pectinata or uh, pristis pristis um, being landed by Colombia coast on the Pacific side. But it was all a drug dealing area, so the guy could not get any more information. In Ecuador, uh, it's probably gone. They register for Pristis Pristis. Um, brackish water going upstream to pup for pupping grounds. There are no records. And uh, for some of the cruises that have been taking part lately in the 60s and recently, still it's still gone. They haven't found it anymore. And it was reported recently on the paper by Aguilar as probably been extirpated from that area. Now Peru, um, there are two reports, one from Microdon, probably referring to Pristis Pristis, and one from Pectinata, which is a bit doubtful. Both species are indicated going up to the Tumbes River, which is this area here that's part of Peru. And I'm almost done. <laughs> and Chile, there are no records whatsoever, and after, even after extensive uh, search for information. So in brief, we have it in Madalena in Colombia and Ecuador at popping grounds, and in Peru up to a limit, not all, all the way to Peru. There are very few records. The pectinata register has, been checked, has to be checked for Peru. And uh, Chile doesn't have any sawfish there, which Julio Lamila regrets a lot. He said, they're so wonderful, they're not here. Anyway, um, and at last, just very briefly, Venezuela. There's limited information, too. The first records are pretty recent um, compared to some of the others. It's probably a Pristis Pristis. Uh, Serving Young reports are two species from, for Venezuela. Obviously, they come from the Caribbean. There's a part of Venezuela which is in the Caribbean, which will explain pectinata very well. And uh, there haven't been any coastal uh, registers in the past 10, 50, 10 to 15 years. And previously, they were mainly from the Orinoco and Gulf of Venezuela um, delta areas. 
And I'd just like to say thank for you for your attention for um, IUC and SSG for the supporting uh, Brazilian agencies who help pay their tickets to come over here, for the institutions that help with the field work support, um, which is really field work. It's out in the field. There's no way you can get by car and uh, you leave and you don't know when you come back. And for colleagues from all the regions that come, contributed with information, lots of edit personal communication and unpublished data, since they don't have enough data to publish. So one of the ideas is to have a paper we're working on it, bring together to bring the status of South America, eventually gathering precise information what's available. And to all students and fishermen that take their time to be answering questions and gathering tiny bits of fish to get the genetic samples analyzed. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>